Yeah, hi folks. Yes, the hikoi's from hell, which were telegraphed by the Maori Party and Willie Jackson, have begun. But let me make this clear. They're not protests. They are totalitarian threats to our democracy. The Maori Party and its cohorts are trying to force the new coalition government to backtrack on its policies in respect to the takeover of New Zealand by Maori. And this is the worst thing Luxon could do. Some people may take offence to the words state-sponsored terrorism. What do you say to that? First of all, I will never be censored. Um, I am a product. I am a product of the whānau who survived state-sponsored terrorism or genocide. Genocide, really? Her mother's Irish, for God's sake. Irish redhead, Colin Cleesby. And this is Debbie and her mother here. So those are kupu that are important to make sure we don't forget our history. Yeah, you know, what I want iwi and I want Māori across the country to understand is that we are deeply committed to improving outcomes for Māori, period. Wrong thing to say. You should never respond to intimidation at all. Now Shane Jones gets it. There's no divine right that the Māori Party has to trounce the principles and the tenets of democracy. And absolutely, this notion of advertising the advertisement with two cocked pistols, it's one thing for the mongrel yeah. mob to run around with guns, but I'm d deeply disturbed they, with the They Maori are kind party. of flintlocks, they could say they're old pistols, but I don't know if people have seen the ad, we must get it up on, on, on the platform. Yeah, well here it is here. Maori flag, New Zealand's flag, Two guns. Intimidation. It is two pistols with two flags, the Tenoranga Terra flag and the New Zealand flag coming out of them and says day of action or whatever. It is very, very violent symbology. Yeah, I just feel that uh, not only is it, a, is it a stunt gone wrong, but it's, uh, it's totalitarian, it's coercion. Exactly. And this is how our very unbiased media covered this story. The mass nationwide protest kicked off at seven this morning, with around a thousand people marching to Parliament grounds in Wellington. Once there, Te Party Māori co-leader Debbie Narewa Packer addressed the crowd, reiterating the party's concerns with policy direction. Further north in Rotorua and Tauranga, there were similar sized crowds, protesters vocal but peaceful. In the country's biggest city, Auckland commuters faced major delays along the city's main arterial routes, with traffic slowing to a standstill for a time. And of course, everyone thought it was great. Like, the reason why I'm here is for that, for her. At Rangiriri Pa near Huntley, some of those caught up in the traffic didn't mind. Oh, it's all good. It's for good cause. Hey, for the Māori. I'm all with Te Pāti Māori. I think it's really arrogant and appalling for the government, for any government, to suggest that they should review the treaty in any way. Many non-Māori took part in today's action, including here in Wellington as hundreds gathered on this overbridge. If we don't stand up for each other at the times that we need to, we're going to be like just like everywhere else. Here in Tauranga, along State Highway 2, the message was clear. We will not be um, led down the path of erasure. Police made their presence known near meeting points and convoys along highways in all 18 spots where protesters congregated. While most are dispersed by mid-morning, their message continues to reverberate across the country. We have team coverage tonight. We begin with Deputy Political Editor Mikey Sherman's report. The sound of resistance rising up and ringing out across the country. Whether on foot or on wheels. <laughs> yes, our oppressed Maori arrived in European camper vans and modern cars. They came in their droves. Here in the capital, around 800 marched to the Beehive. 
Yeah, just after Waititi had fed them all good old European bacon egg pies. The official opening of Parliament upstaged by protest rejecting the new government. This government thinks that they can um, walk all over constitutional rights and it's not what we're about. Being young, young rangatahi Māori and watching all of those proposals is pretty worrying for us. Oh yes, the child experts. And that activism was brought into the debating chamber by Te Pāti Māori at today's commission opening of Parliament. Party MPs doing their own unofficial swearing-in before taking their traditional oath in a move that some have labelled narcissistic and others colourful. Political editor Jessica Much Mackay reports. The traditional pomp and pageantry for the formal opening of the 54th Parliament. I, Christopher Luxon, swear that I will be faithful ill and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors according to law. But things quickly got less traditional. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to our mokopuna. The six Te Party Māori MPs swearing and signing up to their own oath before the official one. We made it clear that we, we've had disdain with the current oath, and so we saw our own oath, how we think an oath should be sworn in, in Aotearoa. Yeah, and of course our unbiased media forgot to cover the following. According to Tikanga Māori, I will perform my functions and duties and exercise my powers in accordance with Te Tiriti O Waitangi. Toi tu Te Tiriti! Now to Debbie, the victim. Now we need to be really clear, um, and look, I, I understand that um, one classes himself as a professional politician for a certain genre, but the reality is we did not get, and certainly um, Shane and Act did not get a Māori mandate, and that is something that we have been privileged and honoured to have, and we will heed the call of our people, unlike some who dine off their waka papa, and we will continue to push that forward to this government. The kaupapa that we have is a government that has enjoyed the division and the fact that Māori don't have rights and interests, that we don't have an equities to address, mm -hmm. and the fact that they're comfortable pushing us back 50 years is not going to be tolerated. You know, okay, we're an economic Debbie. nationalist party, and I can tell you this, right. Debbie trades on victimhood, oh. and that has become the kaupapa of the Māori party, which erodes New Zealand's unity and integration. And I'm all about putting that kaupapa out the back paddock. And Debbie does not accept men who sit there and bully her and stand over her and will never. And we are women who have now enjoyed our own views, enjoyed our own aspirations. Yeah, and who gave you that freedom, Debbie? Was it Maori education? Yes, Debbie's education. Stanford University and University of Tasmania. Now folks, I thought you might uh, enjoy this bit of propaganda. In the realm of political discourse, it's crucial to navigate with accuracy and respect, especially when discussing treaties that shape a nation's fabric. 
A recent blog post by Julian Batchelor has stirred the waters with claims about the Maori Party's understanding of the Treaty of Waitangi. Batchelor asserts that the Maori Party is encapsulated in a bubble of treaty ignorance, accusing them of distorting the treaty to fit their political narrative. He simplifies the treaty as a mere agreement for British sovereignty and Maori as British subjects. However, this perspective is flawed. It overlooks the Maori version of the treaty, which conveys governance, self-determination, and the safeguarding of Maori treasures, both tangible and intangible. Courts and tribunals have woven the treaty's principles into New Zealand's constitutional tapestry, guiding resolutions and recognizing Maori participation in governance. Bachelor's analysis also falls short in appreciating Maori culture, which is integral to the treaty's interpretation. Maori values are not just cultural concepts, but are pivotal to their identity and responsibilities under the treaty. To label the Maori party's stance as ignorant is to ignore the evolving role of the treaty in New Zealand society. It's a disservice to the nuanced partnership between the Crown and Maori, and a dismissal of the rich cultural perspectives that inform their treaty obligations. The true ignorance lies in failing to recognize the treaty's depth and Maori's rightful place within it. Yeah, now folks, I think Winston needs, needs to address the following problem. What is the point of changing all the government department names to English when the media refuse to say them? I saw an interview the other day in which Luxon said New Zealand Transport Agency and the reporter followed with Waka Katahi. <laughs> 